Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about Gutenberg. In this tutorial we're going to continue what we started in the last lesson where we implemented the overlay color and overlay opacity in order to control a sort of overlay custom container that goes on top of the background image that we set up a couple of lessons ago. So let's get started. This episode is brought to you by Skysilk. If you're looking for an affordable and reliable cloud provider for your website, Skysilk is the answer for you. The intuitive dashboard interface allows you to quickly deploy one of the many built-in templates in just a few clicks, or directly upload your custom ISO. It doesn't matter if you're a senior developer with hundreds of websites or a student looking to experiment with your first cloud server, Skysail can accommodate all your needs with powerful machines starting at just $5 per month. Skysilk also comes with many other perks, like a convenient reward system where you can redeem Sky Points to pay for your VPS, a never growing Discord community, and lightning fast customer support. Click the link in the description below and use the promo code Alicad Skysilk to get 25% off of your personal cloud VPS. In the last lesson, we implemented everything related to the uh, panel editing and the Gutenberg side where we render all our custom elements or well, buttons, sliders and range controls and everything that we need to control these uh, new attributes and objects that we created. Now we need to pretty much simply just generate the uh, static HTML with the CSS, the custom CSS that we're going to grab directly from these controls and put them in uh, both locations in the Gutenberg block in the editor style and then in the statically render HTML block that gets printed in the front end. So let's do it. First of all, I want to create a new um, container, a new div element inside our CTA container class, which is the wrapper of the entire Gutenberg block in our administration editor. So let's create a new div. Then we're going to give it a class name, uh, something like CTA overlay, something like that, but you can call it however you want. And then we're going to give it a style, an inline style, then it's going to change dynamically based on what we did with our custom controller. So um, the first option that I want to define is the background. In the background, I want to basically return the overlay color variable because the overlay color variable uh, is going to hold inside it the actual color that the user selects. And then the second option that I want to add is the opacity because I want to give an opacity value to this entire container. I don't want to control the alpha of the color, I want to give an opacity to the entire div container. So the opacity is going to be equal to, of course, the overlay opacity variable that is controlled by the slider. Now that we did that, what we have to do, we have to basically copy and paste exactly the same div in our front end because in the safe method. Because if you remember, as I said, if you change the structure of the uh, custom block that is generated in the editor, you have to change and update and absolutely every time match the same structure in the save method, which is what prints the block in the front end outside the editor. So we need to paste the same uh, div container here. And this is a self-closing div. It's correct to do this because we want to have these as an absolute uh, positioned element on top of all our um, all our content. The thing that we have to do here, we have to change a couple of things. Actually, we have to implement a couple of things because we're not pulling the constant objects attributes that we declared before. So we need to copy these two objects and then put a comma here and paste them. So now we know that we're importing them and we can use them. Perfect. After changing, of course, always remember to open the terminal and run npm run start build. Now that we compiled our new block, let's refresh, leave this page. Probably we're going to have an error. Yes, of course, because as usual, we changed the block. So the block saved in the WordPress database doesn't match anymore the JavaScript that generates the block. So we need to delete these. Once again, this is one of the many shortcomings of Gutenberg. Then we can generate a new block. We can give it another title and then description here and then we can add a background image let's add this if we change these values uh nothing happens you can see nothing is changing here so let's put it 
white, something like that, because uh, we didn't style the CSS of this block. But if we open the inspector, and actually let me zoom in the inspector a little bit, and we select our block, look what we have there. We have the CTA overlay, which is just a div that is not style, it's just that the hub is, is just a line, it's just not even a line, doesn't have any height. So we need to put some custom CSS in here. And just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to show you some something in real life, we're going to do it here directly. So right now you can see uh, the element has some inline style with the background and the opacity that matches what was selected here. We have the background color that it's the white and then the overlay opacity at 0 0.79. We have opacity at 0 0.79. So what we did works. It's just a matter of CSS styling. So if we put this to um, position absolute and then we give it a top zero left zero right zero and bottom uh, not border but bottom zero look what we got here all our CTA is completely covering uh, the image is completely covering all the um, content of our rich editor that it's right here and if we update and we change the values here these values change accordingly. And we, of course, can select a custom color and we can see that all the things change and match our selection. Look at that. Isn't this super cool, right? Let's put it white because otherwise it's not readable. So since we know that now, we just simply need to define a custom CSS class and add these uh, couple of attributes. So in order to do that, we need to write some custom CSS. Uh, the new themes, especially the themes based on Gutenberg, they don't just have simple CSS. If we open our uh, fine inspector, our file three of our theme, you see here, it's all about SAS. Everything is as CSS. Uh, there's no just regular CSS anymore. And of course, if we we open our uh, package.json file in the scripts, we have also some commands to build the style. Right now we are building the scripts, but we can also build the styles or we can uh, simply run watch that it should uh, simply recognize every time there's a change in the SCSS files and automatically runs the build. So it does pretty much the same. So we're going to do this. We're going to interrupt the running on the script and then we're going to type npm run watch this time. So you can see after a bunch of things, it compiled pretty much everything, compiled all the CSS files, SCSS files, all the JavaScript files, compiled everything. And now, because we cannot use the terminal, it means that the terminal or the scripts, the NPM script is currently running and watching whatever we're doing here. So we can continue. And whenever we save a file, a JavaScript on SCSS file, the script will automatically rerun and recompile or our all our assets. So what we can do here, we need to add those two uh, very simple CSS declaration to a custom class that we want to call CTA overlay. First, we need to add the CTA overlay inside the style editor, which is not the same style, the CSS style that it's inside the front end. So if we uh, go back to our code editor. Uh, currently I'm using the 2019 theme from WordPress and the style editor is in the base directory. So we have our style editor .scss. I can open it here and I scroll all the way to the bottom because I don't want to interfere with other styles and I can create a CTA uh, overlay class. And here I can define my two uh, attribute here, position absolute and inset. If I save and I open my uh, terminal, you see something compiled. So something was regenerated. If I update this and now I refresh this page, I should have my style saved. So if I open the inspector again and I select this custom block, I should be able to add the CTA overlay that has an editor style wrapper CTA overlay with our custom style that we just declared. Perfect. If we do this, of course, everything keeps 
working and changes, it's, it's totally fine. If we actually go and take a look at our post in the front end, you can see that the style is completely different. It's missing that CTA overlay, even if we have it in our front end, because it's getting generated here, you see the CTA overlay, it doesn't inherit automatically the style of our style editor, because uh, WordPress manages the style editor and the front end style in two different files in order to not load the same things over and over again. So uh, we can do the same exactly, uh, just copy the CTA overlay and just update it into the style CSS if we want. This is like the general style that it's importing everything, but if we wanna be a little bit more precise, we can open the SAS folder in the 2019 and uh, just open blocks. This is the SCSS file that takes care of all the custom block styles. So we can just put it here just to be a little bit or more organized, but you can put it wherever you want, absolutely. Paste it here, let's save. Let's go back in our front end. Let's refresh our front end. And now you can see something is wrong because our um, overlay, it's not bounded to the CTA container because a block inside the style editor automatically has a position relative. So the absolute div sticks to the position relative of the parent. This block by default doesn't have it, but we define originally the CTA container. So we can use that to define the missing class that we need in the front end. So we can just simply say uh, CTA container position relative and just because it's scss we can actually indent this so we know that it, the cta overlay will be styled only and only if it exists inside the cta container and not if it's outside so after saving we refresh the page and now it works but there's another issue here. The text is not visible, is not there anymore. So uh, once again, the styling of Gutenberg in the editor prevents all these sort of issues that we're experiencing right now. All the editable elements and everything that we can control, it's always in position relative and with a higher Z, Z index. So it's always on top of everything of our custom elements. In the front end though, that's up to us. We need to style this. So let's do a little bit of styling. So once again, in the blocks.scss file, I can do something very quick and kind of dirty. I can put a star that basically represents all the elements that are inside the CTA container are gonna have a position relative and they're gonna have a Z index of one. And then why don't we say that I wanna text align is center. Perfect. And then in CD container, I wanna also give it a padding of 20 pixel. And actually the top is gonna be top and bottom 10 pixels and uh, left and right 20 pixel. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Let's save this. Let's go back in our front end. Let's refresh. There you go. Look what we have here. We have our content aligned to the center. We have our CTA overlay that it has a position absolute and inset zero, it means that covers the entire area. And then we have all our element that then match the CSS selector that we said every single element that it's inside the CTA container has to have these options, the description H2, and even when in the future we're gonna put a CTA, an actual call to action button that we can control here, it's gonna be visible. So that's pretty much it for this lesson. Once again, thank you so much guys for watching and until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.